you know, that's such an asset to a club, you know, and especially a big guy, you know, who likes to go to the basket is, you know, some guys are really good at getting fouled and, you know, you don't have to make every shot when you're going to the hoop, getting fouled and you shoot free throws like that. Well, we saw Xavier's pressure. Now the Musketeers break it on the full length court pass. And Dwight with a hard foul on Williams. Well, that's the kind of foul you're supposed to do it. Somebody's, uh, if you can't break the press, go over it. And there you see, here comes the hard foul by Dante Bright. And, you know, make him earn two from the free throw line. Don't uh, either let a guy shoot it there or, or uh, foul him uh, good. You don't uh, do one of those ticky-tack fouls and let him get a three-point play. And Darnell Williams is only a 60% free throw shooter. But he looked pretty good on that one. It looked yeah. like a 60% stroke. And, and, and good coaches and, and clubs will talk about those kind of things before the ball game. So when you're matched up with a guy, you know, you know what kind of free throw shooter he is, whether he can go left or right well, as he like the jump shot. And, you know, he hit two there, but 60% uh, usually catches up with you by the time the game's over. Again, the pressure this time. Minute men handle it easily. Padilla in front court. Dingle. Left-hander drains it. Boy, yesterday in practice, he must have had about 30 of those in a row in their shooting contest. That's where he likes to shoot the ball, right there at the free throw line in the key area. And again, the pressure applied by UMass. And Xavier gets into front court. See, no harm there. UMass press. Xavier broke it, but they didn't get anything out of it, and they made him use time. Williams thought about it, but didn't pull the trigger. Instead, down low, Johnson with the jump hook in the lane. Unconscious is the word. Can't be. Nice feed by the big guy. Excellent pass to Bright, who easily laid it up and in. You know, good teams like UMass, you know, they've seen it all. They, they said they play a lot of top 25 teams. I've seen crowds like this. They don't let the early part of the game get them too nervous. They know they'll be back. Lumpkin had it partially deflected by Padilla. Travieso, down low, bright right to the basket. You see him shield the defender away with his body and lay it in off the glass with the right hand. Yeah, Padilla with the quick hands, the long arms. You know, bad shot right there by the young guy, Lumpkin. You know, when you do those kinds of things, what happens, happens. Fast break the other way. Brown cut off on the baseline. Solid defense that time by Travieso. Short, rebound, Carr, trying to get something going against Camby down low, bounds. but he stepped on the end line. And it'll be the turnover, and UMass will get it. We'll be right back with a two-point game. I love what you do for me. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. And Excedrin, Excedrin, the headache medicine. Two-point advantage for Xavier over the nation's number one and undefeated UMass Minutemen. There was a little walk, yeah. just a little one. Just a little one. Padilla quickly into front court. Camby, free throw line jumper too hard off the back of the iron. Again, that's if you're Xavier, that's where you want Camby shooting the ball. He's outside, he's not underneath getting rebounds. And everybody hits the deck when the ball's down low. Oh, hey, UMass especially. I mean, they, they just, uh, even in practice yesterday. Nice job of uh, hustle here, as we said. Camby uh, looked like a, a linebacker jumping on a fumble there. You know, last two times Xavier brought the ball down the floor, you know, they took really rushed shots, and, and I think one of the things that they have to do in this game is get quick shots. If they allow UMass to set up their defense in a half court, they're going to have a very difficult time in this ball game because they play such good half court defense and, of course, got the nation's best shot blocker, you know, back there behind him who's averaged about almost eight blocks a game since he's come back the last four games. So they've got to get quick shots off the missed baskets and hustling the ball up the floor. And the penetrating move that time by Johnson. As he draws the contact, and he will indeed go to the line. Johnson, the uh, only starter from last year. In fact, he averaged almost 
12 points a game last year. This is only 10 and a half because he's had some good young kids come in to play with him, and uh, he's a 63% free throw shooter. Now, Tyrone Weeks has checked into the lineup now for UMass, and all Weeks has done, particularly in the Temple game, was put his big body against Mark Jackson's big body and virtually nullify him once he checked into the game. Yeah, he's a banger. He's been brought in to get on the boards, bang him, and, uh, you know, if you don't get the ball uh, off the boards, you can't fast break, and that's what uh, UMass likes to do. Again, it's Padilla who will set the offense. Travieso lets it fly. It's going to be short off the front of the iron. Yeah. Brown has it. That wasn't a good shot. I think that was it's my turn to shoot shot, you know. He hadn't had one yet. That wasn't really in his rhythm. The perimeter ball movement. Lumpkin gets cut off by Padilla. See, now, right now, I think it's real tough for Xavier to get a good shot. You know, UMass plays such good D. So well, you call right it there. the air ball right there yeah. by Williams. They've yeah. got to come down, push the ball up, get a quick one-on-one -on -one or a quick post-up. Campy right to the basket. A little short. And the Musketeers wanting to open up the court a little bit. Yeah, they should. Now, see, right now is when they need to get it. Boom. Okay. Lumpkin hits the three. Well, it's a lot easier to play this pressure D when this crowd's with you. You know, you got those springs in the legs. It is non-stop noise in the garden. Weeks down low, Ooh. in between two defenders. Shows what Bulk will do. Mm. Big strong, 260 pounds. Well, we told you how he nullified Jackson of Temple in the game a couple of nights ago. That allowed Camby to roam in underneath and he finished, Camby finished with nine blocks in that game. And we can take a look at the big fella down at the other end as UMass runs a post up. There's Weeks, nice move, nice pass to the right hand. Boy, good quick move to the basket up off the glass. That was, that was a clinic right there. Lot pass down low. Everybody's looking at each other. Kevin Carr delivered. Camby's looking at the bench. He knows it was his fault. And the guy taking the ball out of bounds, everybody kind of ignores him when the ball comes in. Boy, this place is really up and yelling now. Well, right now, UMass is a little out of sync. You got Camby shooting jumpers. You know, you got Travieso taking a tough shot. They're a little, uh, a little bit rattled. Camby. That's what he ought to be doing, right? Around there. it wouldn't go, but there's Weeks with one tip. Weeks tries to get it again. He cannot. Yeah, but that's the right shot for them. T.J. Johnson with the rebound for Xavier. Brown, right to the basket, draws the foul. Travieso. Here's the out-of-bounds play last time. It brought this crowd to his feet. The guy from out-of-bounds. Cammy gets lost a little bit, and bingo. It's a stuff. Yeah, Kevin Carr, 6'8", junior. Again, you saw Xavier come down, semi-fast break before UMass really got set up. Ball to the basket. That's where they need to get their offense, quick. Marcus Campy gets his first rest of the game. Kevin Carr will get his first rest. Terrence Payne checks in now for Xavier. Brown will be at the line. Almost a 70% free throw shooter. Getting these free throws is uh, a great asset for the Musketeers. Hey, you can set up that press. And you see the team foul situation already. First offering was good. Second one is also in. And, and the most important part about that is with only one foul, it allows you to play a little bit scrappier, a little bit more physical on the press because it's a non-shooting foul. It is a nine-point advantage for Xavier. Tough shot. Would go. Johnson with the rebound. And a reach-in foul. That's number seven. 
So we're going to walk to the other end for the rest of the half, 12-28. So if I'm Xavier right now, I'm real, real aggressive on defense. Marcus I'm, Campy's ref, by the way, is that's over. That's right. I'm bumping, I'm banging. <laughs> You know, yeah. and UMass now has to play a little bit differently. You know, they, they have to funnel guys now, you know, to Camby and not really play too physical out front. That'll send Johnson to the line. And the key right now for Xavier is they are making their free throws as Weeks goes to the bench with his third foul. That one, however, will not go, and Camby has the rebound. Dingle gets cut off in the center of the lane. Bright, pull up one-hander, too hard off the back of the iron. Johnson has another rebound. Lumpkin finds the lane, dishes off in underneath, and the pass went awry. He wanted to get it over to Payne, who I don't really think saw the pass coming at that time, but it went out of bounds. Right thing, wrong result there. Push the ball up the floor. Here's Camby. Now, he likes to down low there, but watch Payne. He's, his assignment is box him out. I don't care if you get the rebound. You just make sure he doesn't get anywhere near the basket. Seal him off. Again, the backcourt pressure. And again, UMass handles it. that's a little bit easier thing to do if you're not worried about going and getting the ball. So he's doing the dirty work, and TJ gets all the bounds. It's an 8-2 Xavier run in the last three minutes. Padilla trying to reset the offense now. Down to eight on the shot clock, and they throw it away. That's Camby's fault. But UMass. A little flustered. We'll be back to Cincinnati in a moment. He started putting money away from my college when I was out. What Xavier has on the floor right now. Not, and not, then, not, not, not a lot there in experience. Not much in experience they're showing, though. They're playing very well. Gary Lumpkin and Lenny Brown played together in high school. Brown, of course, went to a prep school for a year, so... He's a year older than Lumpkin, but that gives him a little bit of an advantage in the backcourt. These guys are used to playing together. Carr in front court, takes it right to Campy! Whoa! Oh, It'll be an offensive charge. Well, a little bit too much adrenaline there, maybe. But you know, the right thing to do, keep going at him. Don't get tentative. Here he goes all the way to the basket. Campy uh, pretty well set, I think, there. Maybe a tad bit late. Uh, that, that call could have gone either way. UMass, by the way, has only one field goal in the last five minutes and ten seconds. Well, so far, Xavier's defense is what's really doing it. Their defense and their very, very good board play. Now, UMass right now, 4 of 13 from the floor. And Dingle, and that one go way awry. Ball was saved to Campy, who finishes. But if you're Xavier, you can't get upset. They really didn't break down the, uh, look at that. Look at that hustle by Campy. But the Musketeers get it back. Lumpkin buries the three. A 43% shooter from three-point range. Two in a row for Lumpkin. But on the other, there's Camby again now. Look at Payne, shot, hold yeah. him out. Well, Payne was starting out on a break, so, you know, if you're, if you're, Xavier, you don't get too upset about this. This was a lucky basket. They're still playing good, solid defense on the other end. Into front court, Dingle controls, now it's Padilla. The only minus I saw in that is Camby got off the schneid, you know, he, he had not played well up to that point. All right, they drop it down to Camby. Oh, boy, was that see? a sweet shot. You see, called it. See, it's four misses in a row, and he gets a, you know, a gift on a dunk, and it kind of relaxes him a little bit. Rebound controlled by Weeks, who's back in the game and playing with three fouls. Dingle rattles that one in Clopton. Maybe he's starting to get into a little more of a flow now, John. Yeah, but Xavier can't back off. they got to keep it at him. They cannot play half court with UMass. 
Tyson Britt into the lineup now. That one's knocked away on the defensive play by UMass, and here's Padilla right to the rack, and he couldn't get it to go. Rebound, Weeks is in there, and he's fouled before the shot. Cammy got a little bit of rest. Come out a little, oh, there we go. Huh? I don't know, 221's there. I, I look like the guy in a white uniform, a little bigger, a little stronger. <laughs> I don't know if uh, I want to bump with him if I'm Cammy. Your, your philosophy is don't bump with somebody who's much bigger? Yeah. <laughs> from the corner go off to the your right. assets. <laughs> Quickness. You know, when you go bumping and bruising out there, you got to pick the right guy. That's it. We anticipated that UMass would lead in the block shot category, and they already do. This is Brent Swimpton Lunkin now. Now this is where it's tough for Xavier to, to get a good shot. Down to eight on the shot clock. Now five, whistle away from the ball. And Campy likes it, but T.J. Johnson doesn't. Well, T.J. knew that uh, that, you know the ball had to go up pretty soon he started to get into position and his elbow got out a little too far and of course the referees wanting to make sure nothing starts you know from what occurred earlier that we caught they called a quick foul ball loose on the floor Padilla still maintains possession Padilla with only four turnovers in his last four games struggling just a bit here against uh, Xavier's tough deep. Right, let the fly from the outside and won't fall for it, and Payne collects it on one bounce. Johnson brings it back outside, now it's Britt for three. Deep rebound goes to Payne. And Lumpkin is not afraid of putting it up. Look at that, no look pass, Johnson in underneath. Virginia Tech, led by Ace Custis and head coach Mel Foster. Then GW. Wow, Mike Jarvis has done a good job there. Then it's Xavier, Duquesne, LaSalle, and Dayton. Yeah, and Xavier, you know, was in the uh, MCC last year, and they've had 22 straight conference wins. Uh, and uh, went the whole year last year without losing a game in the conference. So they're trying to continue that streak right here. Right now, got a good start. Camby, tough shot, and he got it! And through the foul. Right now, let's go to New York, and here's John Sunder. All right, Jim, thanks a lot. Kansas and Kansas State, and K-State on the break. John Rhodes 
pulls up and knocks down a three-pointer, makes it a five-point lead in K-State, leading number three Kansas at halftime by four. Jim, back to you. Possible upset growing with the Kansas State Kansas game just as we have right here. I don't think that's nearly as big as this one. Xavier, although five and two in the conference, nine and eight overall, but a very young ball club. Figured would be very nervous in a game like this. A deal with the steal, then the reach in foul by Xavier. It'll be on Lufkin. <laughs> Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, Michelle Kwan and other national champions take the ice in special performances at the Thrifty Car Rental Skating Spectacular. That's Saturday, 4.30, 3.30 Central, right here on ABC Sports. 16 foul on Xavier, and so now they'll change a little bit the, the way they're playing their defense. They can't be quite as... Uh, Aggressive out front to draw fouls because now they'll obviously be shooting fouls. Gib Prosser out of the Merchant Marine Academy. Think he's got a few tricks? <laughs> <laughs> you can count on that. Inbound pass goes into Canby right in the center of the lane. They drop it down low. Dingle can't get it to fall as he shot it too hard off the glass. Had it rejected by Payne and then rejected by Williams and out of bounds. Yeah, but let's look at the significance of this. UMass beginning to dominate their offensive boards, getting a lot of second shots, and Xavier can't uh, allow that to happen. Williams way out on, on uh, Travieso. Now Padilla is yeah, out there in court. Xavier extends their defense. They're, you know, they'd pick you up in a locker room if they could. <laughs> that is quite a distance from the court, too. Campy should have taken the shot. Yeah, whenever you make a move and you jump, you, you always got to think shot first, pass second, because it's easy to change to a pass from a shot, but not from a pass to a shot to a pass. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll still be Musketeer ball. Of course, you get a reset when that happens on the 10 seconds, but they're not going to need it. Williams at the other end. Oh, from behind. A spectacular play by Bright. Great hustle by Bright. One of the things that a guy like that wants to do when Williams says that is he knows Bryce behind him. He should wait for the contact, at least draw the foul. He could cause contact himself, and he's always going to get the foul. Well, we're still in just in the first half of play. This game's had a little bit of everything as Brown trails the three. Brown, not quite the shooter Lumpkin, only 28% from the field. Five points now for Brown. Again, you see the pressure. And they ran nearly 10 seconds off the shot clock with that backboard. Well, pressure. it makes it difficult to post Canby up, too, when you make them run a lot of time. They get one or two looks at him, but don't get a third and a fourth. 29-19. Xavier, pick and roll, that pick and roll. Point lead. Yep. Not a very good pick by Canby. Shot won't go, rebound, Dingle, hacked in the act. There they are again, though, see? UMass on the offensive boards, getting inside position. The way you do that is execute your offense. You had strong side pick and roll, which caused the switch. You had a down pick on the weak side, caused the switch. The shot goes up, you got inside position. So Dana Dingle will go to the line. A 63% free throw shooter. And he's a little less than that during uh, Atlantic 10 Conference, down to just 60% during conference play. Kind of interesting on the floor, Gary Lumpkin, the freshman, going around to all the big guys, most of them upperclassmen in the game right now, and telling them they got to box out. That's really screaming at them. And you see why Dingle has that 60% free throw shooting for Sunny. Missed them both. Padilla with a rebound, scores and fouls! Oh, Mr. Padilla sneaks it along the baseline, John, grabs it, and follows it real nice. Well, you know, that's the old trick, see, where 
car goes to box him out, and instead of coming into the middle, Padilla sneaks around behind him, underneath the basket, the ball rolls off, which is really the only way he's gonna get a rebound. He's got a possible three-point play, and you know, I don't have a stat right here, but I'll bet you that's seven or eight offensive rebounds for UMass in the last two or three minutes. Brown goes to the bench. Ken Harvey checks into the lineup now for Skip Prosser's Xavier Musketeers. Again, the missed free throw, and guess who? Ravieso can't get it to fall. Rebound controlled by Xavier on the run. Williams. Ooh, can't be. Uh -uh. Not here, son. <laughs> Not right at this particular moment. That's 11 blocks right now in the game and for the best UMass. part about this, look at him run the floor. I mean, he's all the way underneath the basket on the other end. He runs the entire floor, shows his athletic ability, and blocks the shot. That was the most impressive part. Williams controlling on the outside. Now it's Harvey. Johnson posting down low. Harvey pulls up. It's going to be short off the front of the iron. He couldn't figure out what happened. He got so open. Probably a little cold coming off that bench. Yeah, he's sitting right on top of the ice. He's a 35% three-point shooter, but I think he found out he was open. Didn't know what to do and decided to do. Padilla pulls up. Not uh, hard. Not a good shot either. Got to run some offense. And down at the other end of the court, Tyrone Weeks is late coming down. He got took an elbow at the side. That one won't fall. Campy has the rebound, and Weeks is really suffering. But he's getting up and down the floor. He's a tough kid. He's going to tough this one out. Eight-point UMass deficit. Media again on the dribble. Oh, he hurts him to stick his arm up in the air, but he takes it right to the rack and then tries to follow. Right into the hands of Campy. He can't get it to go. And finally, Xavier has it. Johnson right to the rack. Oh! Great move. Take this big fella. Instead of going on the left side, he used the rim to keep Campy from blocking the shot. Went around on the reverse. The joint really jumping now. Pass thrown away, controlled by Harvey. Full length court pass. Williams will draw the foul. Listen to this building. Team down. Watch the move here. Instead of going up on the left side where Camby could have blocked it, he came around and Camby couldn't get to it because of the rim. DJ Johnson igniting the capacity crowd here at the old Cincinnati Garden, the place, John, where you played in the NBA for what, the Cincinnati Royals, right? I played here so long ago, I'm surprised the thing's still up. <laughs> I could tell, though, you had a little tear in the eye when we walked into oh, the building yeah. today. Locker room still same place. Cannot complete the three-point play. And they work around the perimeter. Right behind Padilla. They look for Camby down low. Johnson has a defensive now weak. He won't take it from out there. Down to seven on the shot clock. Campy backing in. Spins away from it. And draws the foul. You know, Johnson didn't have to foul him there. He had already done his work. He pushed Campy out much farther than he wants to post up. Had him in a tough turnaround jump shot. Bailed him out with the body contact. You know, we talked a little bit about this story Coliseum and you playing here, but this really was the home of the Big O. Yeah, right. There was another guy named Oscar who uh, set the world afire in the uh, NBA playing on this court in this building. You know, people talk about the rarity of triple-doubles. Uh, Oscar averaged one one year in the NBA. 
And that's back when they had 12 teams. And the league wasn't quite as diluted as it is now. Campy will go to the line. And the first one rattles and jumps out. Campy with seven points, five rebounds, and two blocks. Pretty good free throw shooter for a big fella at 72%. Johnson gets a rest. It is two fouls. Leo Murray is checked into the lineup. Breaking the action. We'll do the same. It is Xavier 31, UMass 22. How to get modern communications technology working for your business. Burger King, where you can get your burgers work. Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the way America plays. And Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. court pass and this one is going to be saved by Williams he tried to call timeout oh, did yeah, he get the he call did. Sure he did. did yes he did ball was going out of bounds Williams grabs it in the air and calls the timeout I'm not sure if you want a timeout though I mean that may be a timeout you need later on well he changed it now to a 20 Process, now they say it is a full. Yeah, it was. Uh, they've used their 20. Yes, they have. They tried to call the 20, and then we're told, no, you've already used it. So it'll be a full timeout uh, for Skip Process Musketeers. By the way, coming up here, the Network MCI Halftime Report, John Saunders, joined in our New York studio by Duke's head coach, Mike Krzyzewski. They'll have scores and highlights from all of today's action. Jim Brooks and John Metcalf with you here at courtside at the Cincinnati Gardens, a storied arena. And you know, in this particular building, Elvis has played here, and he's not leaving the building. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis was spotted here earlier. Especially <laughs> if there's an upset. Here's the save. Boom, here's the timeout. Now, yep. you know, I, I guess at this point of the game, I, if I'm a coach, I may want that timeout. Uh -huh. you know, I may not want to waste that timeout, because i got to know this game's going to be close the whole way. Maybe I want to save that thing because I just had enough time to tell my team what to do. So that may be uh, an iffy kind of situation whether you really wanted to get that or not. It's off to know when a team comes out of a timeout with pressure like UMass had on them that that home run works. Guys are not quite on their toes as much. That pass is a little too long. All right, so Skip Prosser's Musketeers doing exactly what Skip told us that they would do yesterday. In our conversation with him, they said they, said they were going to come out, they were going to play extremely hard, they were going to pressure the ball, and he they, just hoped that they could shoot it well. But the steal here out. by UMass, Clark picks it up and scores quickly. Wasted timeout. Yep. Twenty of the 24 points, by the way, for UMass have come from their front line players, Dingle, Bright, and Campbell. You know, Darrell Williams, really the only starter in the game right now for UMass. This is a very vulnerable time for them. They could not get the ball in. They really are not running offense nearly as smoothly as they were, and I would think that Skip Prosser wants to make some changes here pretty quick. Nice penetrating move that time, and the shot won't go down. Williams has the rebound, had it stripped away. Asserting themselves now okay. into front court. Problem is he can't, you know, he can't foul because it'll put him on the line. He can't call timeout because he'll waste another one. But he's got a tough situation trying to get guys back into the ball game right now. Entry pass, Campy. Off the glass, couldn't get it the fall. This is Kelsey at the front court. 5'10 sophomore guard out of Cincinnati. Whistle away from the ball, and it's going to be on Payne. Blocking foul, player control. Uh, once the uh, offensive man slides by a screen, you can't move. That's a foul, and they wholesale changes here. As I think Coach Prosser saw he was losing a little momentum there. Yeah, Card obviously checks back in in a hurry. As does Johnson. Interesting story on number three, the little guard, Pat Kelsey, the sophomore. 
Uh, this is a guy who cuts his own hair. Just to save money. And listen, you don't have a lot of money when you're in college. You know that. So he cuts his own hair so he doesn't have, There he is right there. Johnny does a pretty good job. I, I recommended him to, to you come over and maybe uh, help you out a little bit. Cuts his own cuts hair. Cuts his own hair, yep. Right now, he's probably in the game because Brown has three fouls. Really, the only musketeer in foul trouble. Johnson has two. Payne has two. And Carr has two. Bright delivers at the free throw line. And here comes the UMass pressure. Now, when you got a guy like Lumpkin, you got all three of these guys coming back in the game at the same time, a little cold. They've got to kind of get themselves back into the game. Lumpkin has it rejected, but it went right back into his hands. He couldn't get the second opportunity to fall, and Camby has with another rebound. You see how quick he threw it back up? Camby was right there, and that's another place where Camby didn't block the shot, but, boy, he sure did uh, make his presence felt. Again, the perimeter passing by UMass. Brightman will get into the center of the lane and quickly drop in the short jump shot. It's a 31-28 advantage. We're down to 140 to play in the first half. Yeah, big momentum changed on that on those lineup changes. UMass has never led in this game, and they have trailed by as many as 10 on three different occasions. Swing pass comes to Williams. UMass now on a 7-0 run in the last three minutes and five seconds. And the foul down low. One of the things that Xavier hasn't really taken advantage of until right now is they really haven't gotten into a position where they can draw fouls. And right here you see Johnson going low and drawing the foul from Weeks, but they've been taking a lot of perimeter shots, not really taking the ball aggressively to the basket or off the pressure when they've beaten it. And uh, they had the bonus for almost 13 minutes and really didn't take great advantage of it. Johnson is on target. E.J. Johnson from Charlotte, North Carolina, but then it went to the uh, famous Oak Hill Academy in Virginia. Clark outside. Now they swing to Bright. Bright, tough one-handed shot along the baseline. Well, there was a lot of momentum that changed in that game when Xavier went to a lineup that had only one starter in it. Boy, I think they gave UMass life. And now it's just a two-point advantage you for see, the Musketeers. You see Clark out top, Charles Clark, a very heralded freshman guard. Out of St. Raymond's in the Bronx, really hadn't gained a lot of confidence in himself. He seemed to dive there the, for a loose ball, knock it away. And off the steal, UMass now. Going to take the last shot here on the first half. The deal will hold the ball. He just took a good look at the clock. At about six, you'll see him start to go. It's at six right now. Can't be from long range. He could dial it. There's Weak trying to follow. And they call the foul. For that big body against the smaller musketeer. Yet another offensive rebound. And that's uh, really hurt Xavier here from about mid first half to this point. And UMass has a lot of second shots, and they're really not shooting the basketball very well, but they're getting those second shots. Those really are usually a little easier shot. And Weeks is perfect on the first offering at the line. Weeks a 70% free throw shooter in Atlantic Camp Conference play, 68% throughout the regular season. He got one of two. goes on a 10-1 run yet nearly four and a half minutes. It's a one-point game. We'll be back after these messages and a word from our local station. And you see him 
Uh, it was a very emotional time for him. Yes, it uh, was. He, uh, when I got the podium up and he was uh, talking uh, about everybody who was involved and who everybody who helped him, he broke out in, in tears. And there seems to be a lot of people that have uh, gathered around him uh, as he's walked away from that. And he, you notice the jersey is kind of wrinkled. He's one of those workman type guys, you know? Not one of those pretty boys. He works underneath the best. All right, everybody, tonight it's 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on ABC Sports. Top players of the National Football League gather in Honolulu for the AFC-NFC Pro Bowl. We'll have live exclusive coverage. And on a world premiere Sunday night movie, Ali Sheedy, Perry King, James Rowland take you on the ride of your life. I'm Jack, flight 285. That's tonight on ABC. It'll be interesting to see a couple of things. One is Xavier has that same kind of enthusiasm. The crowd gets into it early, even if UMass scores a couple baskets. On UMass's side, they've got to get Carmelo, he's got to get back in the game, okay? Trevieso has to get in the game, has to get some good shots, uh, has to get some good looks because he's been a non-entity. And here's an interesting point too, in the first half of play, UMass did not make a three-point yeah. basket. Not a three-pointer made they by only, UMass. They only attempted two, they yes. average about 12 a game. So right. Travieso has to get into the flow. Let's see now what the Musketeers do out early in this game. And we have a walking violation against Brown. He changed the pivot foot from the pressure of Travieso. Uh, I don't know about that. That's uh, didn't really gain much by that out front. There's been a lot of traveling. That's a weird call. And UMass now with an opportunity to take the lead for the first time in the game. They have never led. Well, this is where you'll see if uh, Xavier can withstand anything. I mean, it, it, you know, if UMass gets a couple of quick baskets here, there goes uh, the Camby down low, which they should do all the time. He just, this crowd and their enthusiasm stays in it. And Camby just walked right in for the left hand, and UMass has taken the lead for the first time in this afternoon's contest. UMass, as always, pushing out on defense. Tough shot. Very tough shot. Nice move. Went down, two dribbles to his left. Goes up with the jumper. You don't see a lot of that in college basketball today. Good, strong move. Gary Lumpkin trying to provide the spark early here for Xavier. Remember now, Xavier did it with their defense in the first half. The lob down low, Camby. Quickly, the ball. double team. He got it off in underneath. Blocked by Carr. And then the follow slam. Again, two offensive rebounds. Can't give a great team second shot. Bright was in the right place at the right time to finish that one off. This is Williams. They post up Johnson down low. Weak, solid defense. They denied the entry pass. Johnson working the other side. Spins against Weeks. Can't get the shot off. Carr, however, is open. And he delivers. Good patience by Xavier on that one of the few times they've really gotten a good shot out of the half-court offense without being on the fast break. Weeks couldn't get it to fall. Travies is still struggling from the outside. Finally battled for it, knocked out of bounds. And it's going to be Musketeer basketball. UMass continues to get second shots. Here was the first transition. That was the third shot right there. Now there's the fourth that UMass got on the first transition. They just got three more on their second transition. Baseline move in underneath. Solid performance on that particular move by Williams. Did not hesitate, challenged everybody, went right to the rim. Padilla lifts it back underneath. Camby had it knocked away. Xavier goes the other way in a hurry, Brown.
this place was really electric in the first half when Xavier moved out to 10 and 11 point advantages. The crowd was kind of silent when UMass took the lead for the first time in the game, but now they're back. UMass has to do what they did early in the second half here. Go down low to Candy. Let the offense go down low and back out for the jump shot. First half, I thought they tried to take some jumpers out early. A little bit different look on the press. Three-quarter court. Candy pull up center of the lane. Short off the front of the iron. There's Weeks. And the follow shot, he's tied up. Weeks was hoping to get the foul, but instead it's going to be tied up with Darnell Williams. And the possession arrow. Again, not where you want Tammy to have the shot. Two reasons. One, that's not his shot. Two, he's not in there to rebound. But nonetheless, the rebound was procured by Weeks with the jump ball, with the arrow. UMass, they got the ball. I out. just dislike that. Oh, I do, position too. Rule. I think I they should go back. They should go back to, hey, if you tie the guy up, it's a jump ball. Again, right where UMass should go, down low to the big guy, post it up. He's got a big advantage. And if they double, go back out to Travieso and Padilla for the jumper. Paint Weber believes the best investment is an investment in education. They salute Marcus Camby as the Payne Weber Scholar Athlete of the Game and congratulate him on his own investment in the future. Payne Weber recognizes that commitment to education with a $1,000 donation to the University of Massachusetts for ongoing research. Congratulations to Marcus. Rejected by Camby. Now, Camby's not guarding him. He's coming from somewhere. Johnson's got to look for that man. Camby thought about it, but decided against it. Brings it back out to Padilla. They reset the offense. Weeks. Now Dingle. He will pull the trigger from there. Camby has it on the low block. Spins in traffic. And lays it up and in. Nice move. Camby strong side. Swung to the weak side. He got a back kick. Wide open down low. The finish at the other end by Paul. Carr has not shied away from taking the ball towards Camby. In the first half, he challenged the big guy, went right down the center of the lane, made contact, and was hit with a charging foul. This time, it's the other way around. He does indeed get the slam dunk. They had a better angle on this one. I think Camby fell asleep a little bit here. Carr got the jump on him, and Brown, you see, exuberant. One of the things you got to learn is Brown's a young guy. You know, he exerted a lot of energy there. You know, you got to save that energy. This game far from over. Two-point advantage for the Musketeers. Make it a three-point advantage. As Carr completes the three-point play. Carr in double figures. He has 11. Again, Padilla has to back it out. Again, as we talked about early in the half here, Travis are really a non-entity here. They're really not. If I'm John Calipari, I try to get him something. I, I want to play for him. I want him off the schneid. And Padilla, pull away jumper, won't fall. Again, the offensive rebound, weak. Well, that's their biggest weapon, UMass, getting second shots. Weeks the bet is best at that, a big wide body. Again, down low on the block. Carr trying to make something happen, it does. I think Carr has just made up his mind. He's just going to challenge the Camby at, at any opportunity that he gets to see if he can get him into foul trouble. Of course, UMass undefeated. They have the perfect season going right now, and that is their remaining schedule. Well, if you look at this, at Virginia Tech and Louisville are their, you know, games where they, you know, could take some heat, but right now they're getting a lot of heat against Xavier. It's hot here. Campy goes to the bench. And Carr at the free throw line drops down the first offering. That's Campy's third foul. That's why he's at the bench. Two quick ones. John Calipari didn't want to take a risk here. He figures maybe right now it's going to sit him and play the game for trouble. Football on ABC brought to you by Volkswagen. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Drivers wanted. Boost helps keep your body at its best with new Boost Nutritional Energy Drink. 
Network MCI, how to get modern communication technology working for your business. And Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Welcome back, everybody. Jim Brinson, John Bendell with you. It's a three-point advantage for Xavier. As the Musketeers try to pull off the upset, and Marcus Canby watches from the pine with three fouls. This is a time when Xavier, when they got the ball on offense, has to take it to the basket, try to draw some fouls, get into the bonus. Double dribble off the leg, that's a double dribble. Yeah, we wouldn't go down to the right. It'll be interesting to see how many offensive rebounds UMass gets now that Camby's not in the game. Even though Camby wasn't getting them, he gets a lot of attention, which allows other guys to slide in. So let's keep track of that. Musketeers take their time around the perimeter. They run some clock. Inside of 10, Johnson works the baseline. Spit move. Right off the glass. Last time Johnson made that move, Camby came across and blocked it. And here comes Camby again. Five point lead for Xavier. Musketeers have three players in double figures Carr, Johnson, and Lumpkin. UMass led by Camby and Wright. Fifteen, right has fourteen. Well, Travis might as not even be out there. He is just totally non-entity. And this is a guy when Kenny was out. Oh, he just lit it up from everywhere. At Thirty-two against uh, Duquesne, twenty-seven against Pittsburgh. Uh, really came to into his own. And the alternate possession arrow once again comes into play. And we've already voiced our opinion on how we just like that. Well, here's Johnson without Camby in the game. Now, a lot of more confidence. See this blind spin move. Camby's been there, but really a weak move there on the weak side defensively by Bright. He should have come over and stepped in front and helped. Well, Camby is back. I Plus challenge him right here. Well, he pulled nah, up on the outside. you don't want to do that. Not the right move. Could have taken it right That's to him. right. He wouldn't have fouled. So UMass gets themselves a break. Down low, Camby in traffic, and Marcus catches and keeps the ball up high and roughly drops it in. Yeah. You said the key word, kept it up high, didn't get it down low and get anybody to slap at it. Great fundamental move by Camby. 17 points now for Marcus Camby. Elbow foul by Payne. Here's Camby down low, moving very well, got the ball. Gets fronted by Payne. Now he needs help on the weak side. Beautiful pass. Notice he doesn't take the ball down low. He's got the right angle right up. Nearing the 13-minute mark left in the game. Travieso, center of the lane, off the glass and down. That's the first time, went. John, maybe we've really seen it be that aggressive today. Well, I don't know if he went to the bank on purpose or not, but all's well in well. He got a hoop. He had to get off the snide. They really never ran anything for him. They ran that play. I'm not sure that's the exact shot they want. And on the turnover, Padilla quickly into front court. He pulls up and can't get the ball. Boy, both UMass's guards have struggled. You know, they play about 38 minutes a game apiece. You know, this time of year may be wearing on them just a little. And Edgar Padilla, as he goes to the sideline, disappointed that he did not make that basket. 20 second timeout. Uh, Skip Prosser saw things uh, slipping away just a little bit and decided to just make sure that uh, his club got the right shot this time. Well, Skip has done just about everything that he has told us that he would do in this game. He was going to run it up and down. He was going to press. He was going to do it all. Speaking of doing it all, two big days of regional basketball action next weekend on ABC. Saturday on Payne Weber College Basketball. Georgia Tech meets North Carolina, and it's a double dip on Sunday with a seven-up shootout. First, Temple takes on the same number one UMass Minutemen. Will they be number one at that particular time? Then most of you will see number five Cincinnati and Arizona or Texas and TCU. Check your local listings for the game in your area Saturday and Sunday on ABC Sports. There's UMass's shooting percentage. Still not much better than the first half, but uh, have continued to get second shots, which has really kept them in this ballgame. It's a one-point game. 
47-46, Xavier League. Brown, tough shot. I think that uh, Bradley Essel got a piece of that one. He did. Opportunity for the Minutemen to take the lead. Short off the front of the iron. But Dinkle goes right back and gets it, puts it up and in. That should be a delay of the game call right there, batting the ball away. Should be a warning, the next one will be a technical. UMass sensing they're garnering some momentum here. Going to add a little extra pressure. Bound play. They get it into Williams. This is a zone press. This will be a trap. Musketeers handle it. Now they have about 20 seconds to get into their offense. Every time Carr has gotten it now, he's taken it toward Camby. If you want to challenge Cammy directly, but you certainly want to do some things that will, in your offense that will take the ball turn. They had to force that one up. There was only a second left on the shot clock. Padilla quickly in front court. Rabiesa looked for Cammy, but he was double teamed down low. That'll be a walking violation. He jumped at the feet. No. Three second lane violation. Go so on the turnover. Timeout is called. We'll do the same. We have a dandy, a one-point UMass advantage. Wow, this one has had everything that we hoped it would be, and maybe even more right now. Absolutely, and UMass, you know, now beginning to go down low to Canby and uh, do some things and take the offense from down low back out again rather than try to force them outside, opening up a little bit. I think they got to get their guards still involved more in the offense. On the inbound play, Brown has it. And being hounded by Travieso, and Dingle knocked out of bounds. You know, even though Xavier gets the ball back and they get a new 10 seconds, it starts some thinking. See, they may not, you know, geez, am I getting tired? Or, you know, are things, uh, they press a little bit better? And they, you tend not to try not to make mistakes rather than be aggressive. And anytime somebody presses you, you got to be aggressive with it. You have to attack it. The reach it foul on Padilla. Yeah, it's only the third team foul on UMass. There's two on Xavier, so neither team really in any kind of foul trouble here. Coach Mike, uh, one of the things that uh, might be interesting to me is in the first half, uh, UMass did not go low to Camby. Now they're going low to him a lot. Well, I know you don't like that, John, because you want all the guards to shoot. Uh, but, uh, I think part of that had to do with the fact that Xavier is doing such a good job of uh, pressuring the ball. Yeah, there was in, you know, so much enthusiasm. You guys know that you're right there with the ball game. And uh, sometimes you don't see the guy as, as well. Uh, there's good defense. There's a, lot, you know, there's a lot going on. And the guards are a little bit distracted, although UMass's guards don't get distracted very much. And I think they've just adjusted to the game and, and adjusted to Xavier's defense. Yeah, as UMass begins to pick up the, the defense, you know, one of the things, UMass is dominating the offensive boards. If you're Xavier, what do you do? You do. You do. Well, you got, I think well, you got, if you can't get the board, you have to try to hit it out. Yeah, you know, that's one thing. Our, our team has been dominating on the boards a little bit this year. And we tell our guys, if, if you can't get two hands on it, at least try to hit it out of there. Maybe one of our perimeter men can pick it up. But that's one of UMass's strengths is their ability to play as a team defensively, but also rebound as a team defensively and offensively. They, they play as well as a unit as anybody in the country. Coach Krzyzewski, Jim Brinson here. I'd just like to ask you, after what happened at Temple a few nights ago, could UMass come in here maybe a little bit flat and they're really struggling with their game? And, of course, the way that Xavier is playing, I think that would have an impact on what they could try to do today, too. Yeah, I don't think they, they came in flat, but they certainly can't match the emotion initially that Xavier would have. Uh, they can't play every game like the national championship game like their opponents uh, will do. 
Uh, but what they can do, because they're a veteran team and they have a, a heck of a coach, uh, they can adjust to the environment. And that's what I think uh, you know, UMass does so well with their experienced club. They adjust to the environment and then they feed off of that enthusiasm eventually because they're not going to be rattled. It's, UMass is not going to beat themselves. Somebody has to beat UMass. You know, Mike, uh, you know, Mike uh, early in, late in the first half, Skip Prosser rested uh, a bunch of his players, and I thought momentum changed then, and I'm sure he's worried about them getting tired, especially with all this emotion. You got uh, 10.39 to go. Do you rest them again, or do you let them go all the way? Well, it may be good to rest them a, a little bit also. You know, John, when, when you're the team that's the one that's emotional, you use more energy in warm-ups than the other team may use in the first five or six five minutes or six of the ball minutes game, minutes just your anticipation of, of a great event. And so that was a good move by Skip. Hopefully he'll, uh, you know, he's a good coach too. He'll make a, a few more good moves, but, you know, he can't keep those guys out of, uh, out of there too long. Well, they're going to do a little work on the floor here. Thanks, Coach, very much. We got a little uh, break of the action here as they uh, do a little uh, cleaning up. Watch Marcus Camby right here. Gets hit. Well, there's a lot of contact. Yeah, there uh, Camby's is. showing uh, that uh, even though his uh, frail frame, he can uh, he can put some bruises on some people, and there he goes down. With the ankle. Probably landing on someone's ankle and just kind of turning it a little bit. Luckily, it was kind of on a semi-jump rather than a shot or a dunk or something like that. Because if you come down on somebody's foot like that, there's a lot of pressure. And you can see what Marcus Campy has done the last four games since he has come back. And today with the 17 points, nine rebounds, and three blocks. You know, when we talk to uh, the people at UMass, they, they never really did discover what was wrong with him. They right. said, what we did is go through just about everything that could have been wrong, and it wasn't, and therefore, you know, felt that uh, it was just something they didn't know much about and uh, just watch him extremely closely. It's a one-point UMass advantage at 48-47. We're down to 10.39 to play in the game. Lumpkin, second opportunity, got it. It's a very critical time, I believe, uh, for Xavier. You know, Coach Krzyzewski made a good point. You know, a lot of emotion uses a lot of energy. This is kind of the time in the game where, you know, it's close and everything, but, you know, geez, you're trying to escape without exerting a lot of energy, knowing that you want it at the end of the game. And Xavier could get buried real quick by a team like this. So they got to be real careful to carry this down to the two or three minute mark. And that'll be a foul on Johnson defending against Camby. I don't think that's a bad foul. You know, Camby's got good position, you know, where he's going to get an easy hoop. It's a non-shooting foul. There's Camby. Oh, not much there at all. Been a lot more banging than that. That's the third personal on Johnson. Entry pass stolen away. Like I said, good foul. <laughs> Brown in front court. The floor is very moist all of a sudden, and I'm sure it's because of the heat from the building here. And we have the uh, the ice right underneath the floor as Brown is fouled, and he was behind the arc, so he will shoot three. Boy, not a great place to foul a guy. Most coaches will probably scream at you. Never foul a guy taking a three-point shot. There he goes up. And Traviesa, who's really struggled the entire ball game. You know, when your offense struggles, especially when you're a, a, as good an offensive player as he is, well, they're not going to give him free throws. No, they throw. did. They say it was after the shot. Yes. Again, not in the bonus yet, so really the foul a non-factor. Outside shot won't go, rebound controlled by UMass. Bright maintains possession, now gets it off to Padilla, he'll move it into front court. Inside of 10 minutes and we're tied at 48. Center of the lane, Bright, fall away, tough shot, couldn't get it to go. Weeks for card down low, he's on the floor, right into the hands of Bright. Campy tips it outside, Padilla controls it. Again, three shots for UMass. They do things right, they'll get a fourth. You 
can't beat the average teams like that, yet alone great ones like that. And that one knocked out of bounds by Brett. And because it was off his leg, it'll be a reset of the shot clock, so a fresh 35 to work with now for UMass. You know, Padilla's tried to make several bounce passes into Camby as you look at the offensive board. You know, Camby's a big guy. He needs to lob that ball into him, put it on the, the correct hand, leading him to where the defense is not. Uh, and maybe a little, do a little more of that. It bounds, pass comes to Padilla. Away loud town, in and out, and back in again. You know, Camby uh, really is not moving nearly as well as he did early in the first half. I think that ankle's really bothering him. Yeah, he's wincing as yeah, he comes out the kind court. Of a grimace out there, huh? Johnson's going to take it right into the center of the lane. Why not? Up. Yeah. You got a guy with three fouls. You got a guy hurt. So you need to challenge him right at every time now. We saw Carr do that earlier, now at this time it was Johnson. 15 points in the game for T.J. Johnson. UMass trying to run the triangle with Tammy down low. Padilla beats everybody off the dribble, draws the contact. Ball knocked around, right back to Padilla. He can't get it to fall. Rebound follow, no good. Two players on the floor. Padilla ties it up with Brent. And the possession arrow in favor of the Minutemen, and we have a player down. Well, Camby really isn't even in the action here. I'm sure he's worried about, again, stepping on somebody's foot down low, playing tippy with the ball, but he limped to the bench after this transition there, and there you see him sitting there, although Looks like he's uh, more interested in resting than he is having anybody uh, try to take care of whatever uh, problem he's having with that ankle. You need to have that ankle raised if he's got a problem with it. Timeout has been called as they attend to the injured player. Like Coming up next, it's the second game of our Payne Weber College Basketball Double Dip. Regional action, Seton Hall takes on Stanford or Marquette battles Tulane. Check your local listings for games. Coming up next right here on ABC. I think it was more of a, in that scramble, I think he, Lumpkin well, hit his head on the floor. Yeah, I've watched the replay to see if he got kicked in the head yeah. when he went down, but you really couldn't tell. The other thing I gotta tell you is, as a player, you know, you take a look at a guy like Lumpkin who probably is going to play the whole half out, uh, except for now they got to take him out of the game. Hey, you may be looking for a little rest, you know. I mean, it, it, yeah, he might be hurt, but uh, if you can grab another two minutes down there, let your team grab some more time over there, it could play an important role down at the end of the ball game. Clark into the lineup, and he will operate outside. Padilla lets it fly, can't get it to go, and Norville who checked in also. Whistle foul, tried to tip that one. Well, Norville's an interesting story. When Campy was out, it was Norville who got the start, but now all of a sudden with the emergence of Tyrone Weeks, Norville's minutes have been cut down. Fourth foul on Carr, I, you know, it looked like to me he was trying to block out. Well, we have a tie ball game with 7.52 to go. Well, you see the time remaining, and we're tied at 50. Marcus Camby stays on the bench. Yeah, you know, Camby played 20 minutes in the first half. He only averages 29 minutes a game, which really isn't a lot for a, a college star when you think about it. And, uh, you know, he just may be dog-tired at this point, although we did see him limping on his ankle. Padilla controls on the outside. UMass continues to dominate the boards. 42 to 26, they have 29 more field goal attempts than Xavier. Down to 10 now on the shot clock, Bright baseline, pull up, nailed it. Ooh, nice shot. Two hard dribbles right up and over Brown. He has a height advantage on him, took him right to the hole. Bright has 16, and can be quickly up off the bench. 
Brown trying to get his shot. And the foul will be on Clark. I don't think that's quite the move Skip Prosser wants to see from Brown. Well, Xavier is going to do it here by doing it together, working some offense, trying to make sure that UMass plays tough defense. So with 7 8 to go, I think everybody's about back in the game for the run. Yeah, Campy is back now. Kevin Carr, a starter, out with four fouls. I'm sure you'll see him a little later, but right now, I think everybody here is... As you take a look at Marcus Campy, winch the ankle a little bit. And we are tied at 52. Crescendo. You know, the two young freshman guards, Brown and Lumpkin from Xavier, have just done a great job on Padilla and Travieso. They're just really haven't been a factor here today. Right pulls the trigger and can't get that one to go. And it'll be an offensive foul underneath. And if they got Weeks, that should be his third. 17 foul. So we'll shoot, shoot the bonus, but you know as many offensive rebounds as UMass has gotten. If you know if you're doing a little pushing and shoving on there and you only get caught once, you're happy. They've changed it now. Weeks has four. Shot goes up and oh, like, you see like, the point. <laughs> like Doberman's man. That's what you do to me. Well, what UMass, point? UMass goes to the hoop. <laughs> They want that offensive rebound. I've felt your elbows with my back several times like that. You know, John Calfrey told me yesterday, if, I, if this team plays defense and rebounds, everything else will come. That's what he wants them to do. Brown at the line is five of five. What point save your lead? As the Musketeers have refused to fall when you have to fly the heat. They're on their feet at Cincinnati Garden. Travieso for three. Nice down screen for him. First real clear look from three he's gotten all day. Well, we told you that he had spectacular games when Campy was out of the lineup. Brown had it stripped away by Travieso, but Musketeers maintain possession. Lumpkin. And Camby comes up hurting again. You see Camby limping away from the rest of the players in the center of the line. Lumpkin to the basket. Hit him from the back behind. Here comes Camby. But he comes down on that ankle, and you can see him wince. And he's limping around. I'm surprised when he didn't go over there. If he's got an ankle, he's trying to... You know, I'm sure he's got it taped already, but tape it a little tighter. I don't send Lumpkin to the line. Lumpkin with 11 points. Now 12. Gary Lumpkin came in today shooting 65%. Well, where, where Brown and Lumpkin have really played well defensively, they've not allowed UMass to get into their offense. Boy, this place is really alive. This was one of the toughest tickets in this city to get today. You can see why. From the outside at three, off the mark, whistle foul. Travieso. And the generally very calm and under control UMass kids 
coming apart just a little bit. Oh, they also look a little tired. Here's the foul. Uh, I didn't see any body contact. May have got him on the hand. And John Kyle Perry, he said, he'd get him anywhere. Of course, you get three when you're fouled in the three-point land. Brown with 11 points. Now 12. And at the line, Brown is 7-7. I, I, I tell you what, you look at the faces out there, and you think Xavier's number one in the country. Yeah, right now. They're very confident, and, you know, UMass looks tired. Well, he's going to get one more. An opportunity to score the hat trick. We're getting in that critical area too. 540 to go. That will not count. Foul will be on Payne, Terrence Payne. As can be made the spin move along the baseline and just beat him to the basket. Payne grabbed him. Yeah, so far, Xavier has not really double teamed Camby in this second half. I think at this point you've got to run at him. You've got to send another guy at him. As soon as he makes that move, force him into the middle and have somebody there to help. Because that's where they're going to go. And they're right back to Camby again. This time he goes into the center of the lane. Another the foul. foul. Yep. Carr's going to check back in now for Xavier. And Payne fouls out. John Calipari taking this time to garner his troops over there and give Lee the official Larry Lambeau a piece of his mind. UMass still not in the bonus. I'm sure that's what John's talking about. That'll be a hold. And they didn't even get the ball in play that time. I got to tell you, Camby made a quick break for the basket. They just grabbed it. I, I got to tell you, this two things are, are important here. One is I, I think they're changing the way they're officiating the ball game. I mean, there's been a lot of this grabbing all the way through the game. And the other thing is, is in one transition, Xavier's gone from four fouls to seven, and now the bonus is in effect. And you know, they might have ridden the entire game out and not been in the bonus. The officiating crew is a good one. Larry Lumbo, Jerry Donahue, and Tim Higgins. Welcome, everybody, to the Cincinnati Garden, Cincinnati, Ohio, where right now the nation's undefeated and number one team in the country is trailing against the Xavier Musketeers in an Atlantic 10 conference game. The toughest ticket to Cincinnati today at the Cincinnati Garden. Marcus Campy makes both free throws. It is a 59-57 advantage for Xavier. Xavier, of course, is a big lead in the first half. Carr tried to follow, could not. Good move to the basket by Lumpkin. They, Xavier should have had an offensive rebound there because three guys went to block that shot. But so far today, UMass has controlled the ball game on the board. Campy backs it, baseline, he drops it down, and we are tied at 59. As we narrow down to the end of the ball game, UMass going to the big guy down low and posting him up. Of course, in one transition, Xavier had three fouls, which pushed UMass into the bonus, so they're even going to go more often down low to Camby to get draw the foul. Brown, spin move, got it to go! And Jerry Donahue is going to wave it off. And now it's Skip Prosser who's chasing the official. We are tied at 59 with 4.37 left to go in this game. Number one, UMass has its hands full with... We believe our most important investment is an investment in relationships. U.S. Navy, you and the Navy, full speed ahead. 
State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. Fifty-nine all, Jim Brinson, John Bengelt with you in Cincinnati. Xavier trying to pull off the upset and the follow shot by Williams gives the Musketeers a two-point advantage. Williams given UMass a little of their own medicine. UMass dominating the offensive force. One of the rare follow shots this game for Xavier. UMass comes right back, however, in the presence of Bright. Now UMass has pressured the, almost the entire game. Now they're not pressuring. This is Carr playing with four fouls. Now Lumpkin. That one won't go. Rebound followers up on the end by Carr. I still think Camby's hurting. Sprained his ankle midway through the second half. He also looks very tired. He only plays 29 minutes a game. He's got almost 30 so far tonight, or this afternoon already. Well, they put Leo Murray on him, and Murray's going to try to pound on him a little bit down low. You can see that going to happen. Now, UMass has really dominated the game on the offensive boards in the second half, in first, the entire game. Williams on a follow there. And, of course, we just had the follow by Carr. So, the Musketeers save a little bit of that energy for late in the game. Camby with 22 points as he drains the first offering at the line. And you see him limp away from the free throw line. Mark is definitely hurting. Yeah, if you limp with the free throw line, you're going to limp anywhere. <laughs> Believe me. That's the most relaxed position on the floor. Short off the front of the iron. It almost got tipped up on end. Rebound battle for it. Controlled by Murray. Slapped out of his hand. And a foul. It'll be on Bright. His second. Big roll for Leo Murray here. With only 3.39 to go, very tight ball game. Now, you saw him launch up that three-pointer. He's four for eight from there, and a big rebound there. He also can uh, shoot free throws. He's 10 out of 14. Now, Barry is a freshman, in which this team, by the way, is loaded with freshmen. You see the timeouts remaining. Xavier called a very crucial timeout in the first half on a saved ball timeout where Williams was going out of bounds and he called timeout. I, I think that's going to play a huge role here at the end of the ballgame. E.J. Johnson checks back in. Murray has done his job. He goes to the bench. Here's the pressure on Padilla. Xavier, of course, has been pressing the entire ball game, both zone and man-to-man. Two-point -man. advantage, Musketeers over the minute men. Dingles make the Padilla. Bright center of the lane, tough shot off the side of the iron. Camby tried to control it, couldn't do it. Off his hands and out of bounds. And you see Camby continue to limp down the court and right to the basket the other way. The shot won't go by Williams. Well, they don't waste any time, John. They're just going to challenge him at every opportunity right now. You know, you must be uh, beginning to give up some offensive rebounds and defensive rebounds. They had dominated the boards 44 to 26 until about two minutes ago. You see Camby not very active, not making good quick moves, and as you can see, really staying out of traffic. Just really cannot get a strong position under there with that ankle. Williams with six points as he steps to the free throw line. Now seven. Darnell Williams is a freshman out of Brooklyn, New York. We told you how young Skip Ross's team is in the first half of play. Battle for the basketball. Musketeers have it. Hope the fire marshal hasn't been watching this yeah. game at the Cincinnati Gardens. You know, one of the things that... <laughs> It's important is, you know, you got three freshmen that's starting and are in the ball game. You know, it, it's tough to ask those guys to win games for you. Padilla got a piece of that one in underneath. Shot won't go. Rebound, Bravo! It's par! They're standing in Cincinnati. We'll be right back with the end of the game. One of the reasons why. Again, the Musketeers coming alive on the offense.
offensive board. This really isn't a board. It's kind of a blocked shot. And you see Johnson take it up, and here comes Carr out of nowhere. Tips it in. Draws the foul. Carr, one of the few guys with a lot of experience shooting college transfer from North Iowa area community college. So he's at least got some years on him. Now all these kids are playing like they're seniors here today. He is one point away from tying his career high. Carr has 17 in the game. Down to two minutes and 35 seconds. Rami Esco controlling on the outside. They have done a wonderful job defensively against Carmelo and Rami Esco well, They're going to try to get the ball to Canby if There's they the can. There's the lob. Carr comes over. That's it. That fouls it. That's five on Carr. Boy, and that's a huge foul. Yes, that, is. that guy's played a big factor, and when you're taking a, a 21-year-old junior and replacing him with a 19-year-old freshman. And Leo Murray is going to check back in, and Carr will leave and gets the standing O from the Xavier fans. Here at the Cincinnati Gardens, this building, of course, we told you earlier, Elvis played here. The Who played here. Jimi Hendrix played this building. And John Metgelt played this building. You're in great company, buddy. Like I said, I'm surprised it's still up. I played so long ago. <laughs> Elvis may be here. <laughs> this is one of those buildings that the people are all over you. The noise is deafening. Just a great home court advantage. Canby cannot convert on the first offering. I mean, they're standing everywhere here. Canby is six of nine at the free throw line. Now seven of ten. UMass who had not pressured for three or four transitions, maybe just to give him a little blow is pressuring again. In the front court, UMass chasing the basketball. Now, I think Xavier's got to be careful not to get too tentative here. You know, you do the best against pressure when you attack it. And they have a tough time getting shots with Camby in the middle in a half-court offense. Almost a steal by Travieso. Two minutes to go. They got another 35. That's the key. The clock in the Musketeers' favor. Boy, Murray's not back, though, is he? Here's Johnson in underneath. Had a rejection by Camby. Now to a minute 30. Do they spot for three? Travis Esso. Sure. Let me short. He follows. The quick come up with it. Johnson has the basketball. You guys stop pressuring. I don't know why. A minute 18 to go. They got to pick him up. They're tired. I'm telling you. Kip Prosser will own this city tonight if his team pulls off this upset. Welcome everybody, Cincinnati Gardens right now. Xavier Musketeers on the verge of upsetting the number one and undefeated UMass Minutemen. Loose ball foul the floor, controlled by Padilla. Lead pass up in front. And it rejected away! A spectacular stop that time by Lenny Brown. Well, Xavier's got to be careful here, not waste a lot of energy. This is a great block as UMass has a chance to, to change the momentum here. On the verge of a major upset is Xavier. We'll be right back. Brown basket right here. Gave the Musketeers a win over LaSalle in the last couple of seconds. And we are on the verge of the Musketeers maybe pulling off their biggest victory in school history. Those of you waiting to see Seton Hall and Stanford or Marquette Tulane and the women's game between Vanderbilt and North Carolina State, stay with us. We will get to those games as soon as this one is completed. Got to go low to Camby. They got to do it quickly, but they got to run the offense. I think to bring him across, maybe. Inside won't go, ball tipped up and in. Another offensive rebound is the key as Wright goes in and tips it in. 
It's a two-point game with 33 seconds. There you see the clock at 33 seconds and a two-point advantage for the Musketeers over number one and undefeated UMass. You know, again, we got to recognize that was a huge hoop, by the way, uh, down there by UMass. But, you know, this is a young Xavier ball club, and these kids are being called on as freshmen and sophomores to win games and not play part in winning games. Had Dayton earlier this year, they were up 10 with a minute and a half to go and lost. Had Notre Dame here, they were up eight with a minute to go and lost. Maybe that hoop by Brown against LaSalle made them throw up. Let's find out. UMass sets up in their defensive pressure. Smart move by Johnson asking him if he can run the baseline. Better hurry, they do. No, he's allowed to run the baseline. Yes, he is. It, it was a hoop. It wasn't out of violation. Here's the pressure in the backcourt. Xavier with one timeout left. And Blake quickly steps up and fouls. And I'm not sure that's what the they wanted. Yeah, I think, well, I think he was trying to go for the steal, and if they didn't get the steal, then they wanted to fight. I think they wanted to probably trap somebody right there. That's no man's land where he stopped. Johnson got a lucky break. Murray checks into the lineup as Harvey sits. Johnson will go to the free throw line. Five of seven at the free throw line. Calipari, I believe UMass is out of timeouts, uh, or he would have called one here to freeze Johnson. Well, he didn't need to as he misses the first one. It spun around the iron and flipped out. Weeks into the lineup now. T.J. Johnson, a 63.5% free throw shooter, but under these conditions, much tougher. All the pressure on Xavier. And he delivers one of two at the line. 68-65, 22 seconds to go. No timeout, so this experienced UMass team have to do it on their own. Padilla lets it fly. Got it! We're tied. Let's see how the youngsters respond. Well, they need to wait. They need to wait. Down low on the block. Ball loose. Everybody fighting for it. Jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Musketeers. Xavier went much too quickly on that play. Again, both clubs out of timeout. That was too quick. You got to wait until about six seconds to go and then make your move. They would have given UMass a chance. That is, Xavier has to take the ball out. Now, if I'm if I'm Skip Prosser, I got my guys. Oh, they did have a timeout left. They had none on the board. Well, Skip wants to talk about it. Five seconds remaining. Do the Musketeers pull off? Maybe their biggest upset in school history? Or does UMass survive another day? What a huge shoot by Padilla. 12 out of, 2 out of 11 today. One for four from three-point range. And when it's necessary, he plugs it. Skip Prosser told us yesterday that his club would come out and play their guts out. He wasn't lying to us. Here's Xavier. You know, that's much too early to go to the basket. See, you want to go with about six or seven seconds to go, so you got time for a shot and maybe a second shot, and UMass doesn't have time to get a shot as it went. They almost gave uh, them a chance, UMass, to shoot the ball, to shoot the last shot. Well, overtime wins for UMass at St. Joe's. 94-89, and at Pittsburgh at 79-71. So the Minutemen have been here before. Coming up next, Pete Hall, Stanford, Marquette, Tulane, and the women's game, Vandy, and NC State. We'll get you to those as soon as this one is completed. Of course, hopefully now, Skip Prosser's telling them, you know, they really don't have enough time, probably, for UMass to get a shot, so they'll try to run something very quickly. If I do it, I take something to the basket. Now, here's Padilla. Two out of 11 the entire day. And the big guy steps up with nothing but nylon. I mean, there was no doubt in his mind when he went up. Well, are we headed for overtime? Are we headed for a monster upset? Well, Seager's in a position here where they should not lose the game in regulation time. 
UMass, the number one team in the country, undefeated. Then it's Kentucky, Kansas, Connecticut, Cincinnati, Villanova, Utah, North Carolina, Georgetown, and Penn State. And here we go. Inbounds pass. They looked down low to Murray. Couldn't get it to him. Shot taken. Short off the iron. Rebound. Nothing there. And we're headed for overtime. And the fans who are standing here at the Cincinnati Gardens in disbelief of what they are seeing right now. They thought that last one was going to bounce around and drop. for the overtime period after this. And we're headed for overtime. UMass made a 6-1 run to tie this game and force the extra stanza. Let's watch Marcus Camby early. Again, we said only playing 29 minutes a game, being forced to play at least 40 here tonight, sprained an ankle, and uh, we ought to keep an eye on him early because this overtime is five and tenth minutes. Brown trying to make it happen by himself. Murray with the rebound. Loses it. Loses on the floor. And now they're going to have to tie it up. And the possession arrow goes to UMass. Not the greatest shot by Brown. Of course, not the shot that Skip Prosser wants to see. Kevin Carr lost in regulation time. And this man, Murray, taking his place. Mr. Hustle, but not quite the man on the board to Kevin Carr. Medea, who hit the big shot, gives it off to Travieso. They look for Camby on the block. Murray has him defensively. This is weak. He will not take the outside shot. He's going to look forward down low. Right, lob, Camby, and stripped of the basketball and the foul. And I believe they got Johnson, and if they did, that is his fifth. Very good offensive execution this time by UMass. They noticed the way Camby was being played. Watch him go to the middle. Camby rolls, boxes his man out, has the avenue to the basket. Nothing they can do but foul. And Johnson is fouled out, and he's the main cog underneath the board. Johnson leads with 16 points and 11 rebounds. A wonderful afternoon of basketball for T.J. Johnson. Skip Prosser looks somewhat forlorn over there, losing two of his big men. Johnson at 6'6", Carr at 6'8". Those are his two big rebounders. We are still tied as Campy cannot connect on the first offering at the line. That's 14. Well, 15 out of 39 rebounds per game that he's lost. Some other people got to step up there. No change in the score. Still tied, and we're in overtime. I think this is a huge transition for Xavier. They need a confidence filler. They need to the crowd in it. The perimeter passing now by Xavier. Center of the lane, taking it right to the hoop too hard. Rebound, right. And he did an excellent job of maintaining his balance and then getting the dribble down. Small lineup for Xavier. They've got three guys under 6'3 and a couple guys 6'6. Six, six, so. Off balance, one hander at the foul. They yeah, bailed him out, had him. Right towards that one, you bet. We told you earlier that in overtime, this year, UMass won at St. Joe's, 94-89, and they won at Pittsburgh at 79-71 in OT. 
It's kind of like, you know, been there before, know what it's like. Been there, done that. And the right cannot get it to fall either. Well, one of the things that happens when you get tired is you lose your legs. And I got to tell you, you need your legs to shoot the ball, and free throws especially. Dante Bright is an 88% free throw shooter in conference, this being the Atlantic 10, and an 83% free throw shooter. We had 40 in row until the Temple game. That's right, throughout the rest of the season. I just, Xavier's just got to get a basket. Open shot. Too hard off the iron. Rebound. Tyrone Weeks. Yeah, they're, it. they're not going to get second shots, that's for sure. Marcus can be still kind of limping up and down the floor. And again, Patia controlling. Center of the lane. Could not get the shot off. Now Camby working against Murray. One hand fall away around and out. Rebound. Tipped up and in. Spectacular tip by Bright. Second it's Weeks. No, I think it was Bright. Oh, I thought it was. Okay, hey, Weeks just raised his hand. Yeah, I thought it was Bright that got it. All right, now this transition's a must for Xavier. Williams. Two. He's inside the oh, line. He was on the line, you're right. But a must too. Crowd's still not into it though. 70, like they were. 70. Do you think they're shocked? Yeah, I think they're not into the overtime. I think they got wasted in regulation. <laughs> Can't be. Around it down. Oh, just too much for Murray. They got a double. They got a double. Canby now with 25 points. UMass trying to maintain their number one ranking and remain undefeated. Looking for the three, I believe. There it is. Down again at the time it is a three by Williams. And we're tied the ball down. He's Kim. We're tied at 73. And the crowd is back, John. Going to the big guy. Back away. The Cavaliers will save it. Padilla kicks it off. Plenty of time off the shot clock in 17 seconds. Now they want to go to the big guy. Pick and roll, and then they'll isolate him one on one. Padilla launches the three. It's no good. Rebound. Tapped away. Nice tip. Xavier has it with a minute to go. Lumpkin wants to waste some time off the clock. Got 27 seconds difference between the shot clock and the main clock. They want to run it all the way down. Looks like if it would have been me, I would have gotten a shot early. That way I get two for one. I'd have taken one about the 40-second mark. Down to five. They isolate Brown. Fall away jumper. Around and out it will go. Weeks has a whistle foul. And they're going to try to lift Tyrone Weeks. <laughs> what I'm talking about, when you got a minute to go in a game and you have the ball, if you take your time and take a shot, okay, with 40 seconds to go as we watch the replay and the rebound, they got a good shot out of it. I mean, it's in and out. Got good board position, but there's the foul. But if you take your shot like at 40, 42, 43, you got seven seconds coming back to get another shot, so you get two for one. In the Atlantic 10 Conference, Weeks is a 70% free throw shooter. In the course of the regular season, he is 68%. And he is money in the bank on the first offering. Seventy-four, seventy-three. With twenty-six seconds remaining. Well, Xavier's gonna, you know, unless he misses the free throw here and they get the rebound, which it doesn't look like they're in position, they're gonna get the last shot. Well, an opportunity for Xavier to tie it or win it with a three. It'll be interesting to see what you go. You know, the theory is you go for. They didn't waste any time. Shot is missed. Rebound. Reach in foul. Bobby Essel. Well, they went right at it. They, they did. for one shot, didn't they? <laughs> Must be the rules. Skip Presser not calling timeout, letting his club go and take the first good shot. Now they want to talk about it. Well, they're going to, you know, when, it, when you have a guy foul out, you, 
have an opportunity to garner everybody together and talk. It's not really a, a timeout. A two-point game. Xavier with 13.7 left on the clock. I really, I really think, John, I, I think this arena is just stunned. I, I think they thought that they were hoping that their team would play well against UMass, but I don't think the fans anticipated this type of game today. Well, and then when at the end of the game, when UMass had to do everything right, even to ward off a, a, a loss and garner an overtime, I mean, and then Xavier misses that last shot, kind of drained everything out of the crowd. Long time to go here, though, with 13 seconds. And what a job Skip Prosser has done with his young, young players. Brown, a 70% free throw shooter. Proud will tell you. That's the tough one. Travieso on the bench over there. Of course, he did not play very well. The tip almost went in. Rebound can be, and they immediately fouled him. Almost had the tip. The tip was in and out. And can be limping as he sort of jogs down to the other end of the court. He has been beat up all day long. Canby with 25 points. Has 11 rebounds. He is 7 of 12 at the free throw line. I remember he missed uh, two right at the beginning of the turn uh, overtime yes. here. Again, being fatigued and, and of course having a sprained ankle, which he got about midway through the second half. Good play And he points the first one off the front of the iron. I think Chuck uh, Skip Press has got to call timeout. He just did. He just called timeout. We have 10 seconds remaining. A one-point UMass lead over Xavier. In Cincinnati, Ohio. And Xavier, one point down from the number one team in the nation, the UMass Benefit. Yeah, Skip Presser, I'm sure he's in the huddle right now going over numerous scenarios. One, if the, the free throw's made, you know, do you go for the win? Um, he's running out of players. He's running out of uh, uh, fouls. Uh, you know, does he go for the three-point and go for the win? Or take what everybody else would think is a tie at home and go for another overtime? Uh, on the other hand, if he misses the free throw, Candy, as he's missed three in a row, you don't have that problem. You can shoot the two. Following our game, most of you will see the Marquette Tulane game. I'm a big fan of taking the ball to the basket in this kind of situation. There's so be. many things can happen. You can get fouled. You can hit it or get a follow shot. All right, inside of 10 seconds, two-point lead. UMass lumped it quickly in the front court. Had it knocked away by Padilla. And here is the breakaway. Clark got it, and he will score. And this game is going to end at UMass now with a four-point lead, and they have won the game over Xavier. The spectacular defensive play by Padilla, the reach around to flick the ball away.